Uh, hi there, Kotaku. Kirk Hamilton here. We are at the IndieCade booth at E3, and we're with Aaron Robinson of Ivy Games, and we're looking at Gravity Ghost, her game, which we checked out last year, and is much further along. It's gotten a lot more involved. Uh, so Aaron's going to walk us through a little bit of the game. So uh, take it away, Aaron. All righty, here we go. We've got a little bit of an opening story sequence here. We've got some characters, some mystery. Uh, so what's the story? The sort story of, the is summary of the story? you are playing as a little ghost girl with her friend the ghost fox, and you're traveling through the galaxy trying to find your way home. And along the way, you bump into these strange animal people, and they used to be all living on one big planet, but suddenly a black hole opened up in the middle and broke their planet into pieces. And so you're there to kind of help rescue them and put the world back together if you can. Oh, nice. All right. And you know, black holes are even dangerous to ghosts because they can't get out either. So it's like oh, uh, everything no. goes into the black hole. Exactly. Even ghosts. Exactly. So stakes are pretty high. Um, so who did the art for this game? I did. No, it's all you. Yep. That's very cool. <laughs> Thanks. So this is kind of like the first level tutorial. You've got to get the star to open the door, otherwise you can't proceed. So what you're doing here is this is sort of like the gravitational pull of this little moon you're standing on. Yep. Is letting you swing around it. Yeah, it's a little print style. So you get the idea. I'm going to skip ahead so you can see kind of some of the new stuff we've done since last year. So this is like the tutorial constellation. A little, this is the Salamander constellation. I'm going to skip ahead to this uh, wolf constellation here because wolves are pretty damn cool. All right. So these are the bouncy planets. Ah, oh, they're like bouncy balls. Yeah. Rainbow Jovians. So you got to kind of try to get your momentum up bouncing around these things so you can get the start. So each level you're playing, you're trying to get the star and open the door. Yeah, exactly. And that's always true. Yep. But then you were also saying as you pick up collectible items, her hair gets longer. Yeah, that's right. And that gets used in a terraforming mechanic that you, you know, it fits into this role you have of like putting the world back together. So these are icy planets that I'm standing on. They're really slippery. They're hard to stand on. If you just kind of glance past them, you don't really land. Kind of sliding off of them. Yeah, exactly. It means you got to be a lot more careful about your momentum. So as you picked up that blue thing, her hair got a little bit longer. Yep, that's right. So those little the things how that long, I, How long can her hair get? There's no limit on it, actually. Oh, so it can, you can like be just covering Maybe the whole zone Maybe there should be, but we this haven't. This could be like a tangled tie-in. <laughs> yeah, we haven't uh, balanced for that yet, so there's <laughs> no limit right now. Yeah. So these are breakable planets here, these clear ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, we kind of go through the world. I'm looking for the, the star. It's in one of these. And they don't break unless you're going fast enough. Otherwise, you just land on them. Oh, I think I see the star there. Go, go, Iona. <laughs> if I can't get this, it's going to be really embarrassing. Huh. Yeah, it's a tricky game from when I was playing it. I was noticing that it, it takes a little getting used to, but I'm guessing once you get a feel for it, yeah, it becomes it, much it more comfortable. It gets a little bit easier, around. you know, and it is tricky, but I think it's also pretty forgiving. There's no way to die. Nothing's going to come and kill you. It's really nonviolent. Hopefully it's a game you can share with your family, you know. Maybe there's a person in your life who doesn't really like video games anymore because they don't have anything for them. Like, I, I work on this game a lot in cafes, and uh, people will be like, I'll be like, they'll be like, what are you working on? I said, well, it's a video game. Would you like to play it? And they say, no, no, I don't really play video games. And I'm like, well, you know, there's no way to fail at this game. And then they'll play it because they just don't want to look foolish right. in front of anybody else. You know, it's really nice. I think that is like a lot of deterrent for a lot of people. There, finally got it. So let's see, what should I show you? Uh, this one I just put in. I was trying to think, you know, what would it look like if it was more like a clockwork? So this is a breakable planet that has my, my star in it amidst a bunch of bouncy planets. So does this kind of give a go. sense of the size of each of the levels? Yeah, sort of for the most part. Held yeah. about this size? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the way the gravity works, you really only need a small number of planets to make right. it interesting. If you get too many, it just doesn't work very well. So. I know, it seems like much more about the conceptual idea of each level. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, the size of it or anything. Yeah, so up here in the rabbit, um, I introduced this idea of these timer planets. So you need to stay in the air for a certain amount of time so it'll shrink. Otherwise, uh, the star won't come out. So this is like 10 seconds. You got to kind of be super zen, you know, floating around. Oh, tricky. Yeah, it's really tricky. That's and I did, cool. I did this because um, a lot of people would play the game, and they'd be like, you know, my favorite part is trying to stay in the air for a long time. Uh, you know, this is, even though that's not part of the game, it's something I just made up. I, I like doing it, right. so I made it into a game mechanic. 
Oh, that's really cool. Thank you. So this seems like this must be one of the more advanced levels. It is, yeah, yeah. So as you play, do they do the constellations unlock sort of in order, like you just move through the game? Yeah, for the most part. So I'm I'm showing you a build where everything's unlocked, but you're collecting right. these stars, and you need a certain number of stars to unlock these later ones. Oh, okay. So you so know. So there is a little Mar Mario Galaxy to this. Absolutely, thing. yeah. That's so very there's cool. seven constellations. Uh, let's see. These are dense planets. They're a little bit harder to escape from than the average planets. You've got to really orbit around to throw yourself out into the middle. <laughs> see if I can do it. Come on. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Nice, nicely done. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm just kind of playing with like what all we have. Let me show you a little bit of the story stuff we've done since last time. Um, so throughout, sprinkled kind of throughout these constellations are these maze planets. And inside of here is a little piece of the planet that's been sealed away by some uh, protective magic geometry, aka a maze. So you need to rescue this planet here. The planet's always going to move towards the girl, so you can kind of jump and use it to position yourself. There we go. So I got this little planet friend now, and I can bring it to the center of the galaxy, as the fox was telling me. And then it will spawn in the sky. And so I'm bringing back the pieces of the planet to put all together. There's going to be, you know, 20 or so planets that all fit together. Some of them have little people on them that you're, you can talk to and find out more of the story from. Otherwise, your little fox friend is here with a little bit of, little bit of detail. The mazes get more complicated, too. Let's see if I can get uh, maze three. Where did I put that one? I think it's over here. Yeah. So we're hoping to release the game, uh, you know, 2013 for sure. Uh, I'll announce it on my Twitter when we have a more concrete release date. But we will be keeping an eye on your Twitter feed then Thank for you. more news about it. Much appreciated. Uh, but yeah, the game looks really, really cool, and Thank we're you. looking forward to playing the final build. Thanks, Kurt. Uh, so that's so that's Gravity Ghost here at E3. This is Aaron Robinson. Woo. You want to throw thing. one more thing in there before yeah. we take off? Yeah. So these are some of the little people that you can come and talk to if I can get over there. Yeah, so there's the dear lady from the beginning. So they can't really see you yet because you're a ghost. So you need to find a way to communicate with them. But they kind of know you're there. They just can't really see you. It's a little owl kid. And then there's one more kid. Let's see if I can get there. <laughs> kind of this little clockwork galaxy. Oh, well, <laughs> back there, you know. <laughs> You guys Just fly off, fly off into the space. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks really, really cool, so we're looking forward <laughs> to it. Thank you. Uh, so Thanks that's so Gravity Ghost, guys. Yeah. Woo.